the movie is really about uh, his observation of her changing and the powerless <laughs> feeling parents have uh, when they see their sweet, innocent kids uh, grow and, and change into a little quieter, a little more sullen, you know, uh, and a little more inside. And, and literally, the, his question to us and, and to himself was, "What is what is going on inside my kid's head?" Which we thought, because uh, we didn't know the answer, you know, nobody does. Was well, what if we what if we tried to answer that in a, in a film? And so, Inside Out really was born out of that observation. Riley is this sweet little girl. We, we, we meet her day one. We meet her and she comes into the world and she's the most wonderful, beautiful baby, um, obviously taken from our own experiences of becoming parents. Um, and this, this just great moment of you know, meeting your, your kid for the first time where you think it's the greatest miracle in the world. And, and right as, as she's born is when we meet Joy, you know, her kind of primary emotion. Um, and Riley grows up the happiest kid. She's she's happy. She has great friends. She you know she loves her parents. She's uh, she's she plays hockey. She has very specific things. She lives in, in the Midwest. Lives in Minnesota, and she's just uh, this wonderful wonderful girl. Uh, everybody loves Riley. And then life changes as it does. Uh, and her father takes a job in San Francisco and, and moves out west to the big city. And that felt like a move to a you know ten year old kid, eleven year old kid is. Uh, is a, is a high stakes thing, right? When you're uprooted and you move and you leave your friends and you leave what you know and the house you grew up in and so forth. And so that felt like a really good internal stage for an emotional drama. And uh, obviously, uh, Joy now has to deal with this and the emotions inside, which, which we see how they handle it. There's great debate in poor Riley how this, how this should happen. Um, and so Riley struggles, as, any, as anybody would in a, new, uh, you know, in a new environment, a new home. Joy's job is to keep Riley happy and to make sure everything goes right and just keep her who she is, which is a happy kid. You've got Anger, who um, I think as Joy says, who's, who cares very passionately about fairness. Anger's job is to make sure Riley doesn't get the short end of the stick, whether that's at school, in the lunch line, or, you know, or what breakfast she's going to get. You've got Disgust whose job is to prevent Riley from being poisoned physically or socially, right? So she doesn't want to let her eat something that's gross, like broccoli in, in this case. Or um, you got to be on the outs at school, the social circles of being an 11-year-old. Um, disgust is pretty judgmental. She's disgusted, not disgusting. Um, and you've got fear. You know, fear's job is to keep her safe. So there's a reason why you're afraid when you hear a dog bark. If you've gotten bit by a dog, you learn, you keep that memory close, and you know to never, never go near another dog. Uh, and he takes his job, as they all do, very seriously. And then you've got Sadness, who's a bit mysterious because no one, even, even poor Sadness, isn't quite sure why you want to make somebody sad. Um, although she instinctively knows when she has to, she's hesitant and doesn't, doesn't want to have her kid upset. So that, therein lies the conflict of the relationship with, with Joy and Sadness. Joy um, has no need, no need for her. She loves her and they're all friends and they get along, but just doesn't want her to touch anything or taint any memories that were happy that she could by accident turn sad. Joy's very protective of her. Um, and so part of the mystery and the fun of the movie is this slow uh, realization that no, there actually is a reason why you want to slow down and feel sadness and so forth. And so sadness has to find her way through the course of the movie. Pete Docter, the director and, and my dear friend and you know, partner in this, um, to me he's the greatest, I mean to me he's the greatest animation director working. And, and the reason is because he is, a lot of animation is about, you know, people say, oh, they're kids' movies, which, which we, don't, we don't necessarily believe. But the truth is, I mean, there's DNA and the roots of it come from, you know, family entertainment. And the thing about Pete, and I mean this as a compliment, is that he is genuinely, a lot of people in, in, the, in this business and in the industry try to get there, and it's a lot of work to get there and to tap that. Pete generally comes from it. Like, he is genuinely childlike, and, and there's a sweetness and an innocence to him. And, and, and because of that, his ideas and his concept and his, and his work come from this truthful, honest place. We look at the films of the you know the great Disney with Fantasia and Snow White and Dumbo and I mean not a day 
goes by that these films don't come up. And I think we're after just the way those films made us feel as kids. There's something about those films that there was a charm and there was a grace to those movies that is really hard to even put your finger on. I mean, even, even now, as we've done a ton of analysis on them and broken them down every which, which way, there's just this magic, you know, to, not to be corny about it, that those films have. And we hope that we are trying to honor that a little bit in our medium and in, in, in modern ways, but just a little dash of the tone of those films is what we're after. So that, I don't know, I mean, I saw those movies as, as a kid, and uh, as we all did, and that's what made me want to work in animation. 